end of the chain. That's about it. Next question. And you oh. Can watch the oh, it's 10 o'clock. <gasps> yes. And the conference Twitter it went is. viral. In That's like how you seconds. do it. And somebody in this room All right, read I had my Twitter handle and followed me. Uh -huh. Shall we get started? Hi. That person. Yay! Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> All right. Is this working? Can you hear me? Excellent. Good morning and welcome to Unlikely Metrology. I have a few announcements before we get started. Um, masks. You are required to wear a mask. Your mask must cover your nose and mouth for the entire panel. You are not allowed to eat during this panel because if you eat during this panel, you will take off your mask. If I see that you do not have your mask, I will stop the panel and use my patented death stare that I use when my students cheat on my exams until you put your mask back on. Don't make me do that. I got in very late last night and I don't want to have to death stare anybody this morning. If you all behave, I would appreciate that very much. Um, other things. Uh, we have several big ballroom events today. Um, at 1 o'clock, we have Starfleet Medical in Hilton Crystal Ballroom. At 4 o'clock, we have Jurassic Park is a Terrible Zoo, <laughs> which is also in the Hilton Crystal Ballroom. And at 7, we have Hard Science, which is in Hilton Grand East. So you should check those out. They all promise to be great panels. And we have an awesome lineup in here that I don't remember, but there's a schedule in the DragonCon app. Um, reminder that the room will be cleared at the end of the panel so that the next panel can come in. So when the panel is over, we'll clear the room for the next panel. Um, we are collecting for the DragonCon charity. Can someone rattle the DragonCon charity bucket? Uh, which is open hand this year. So if you want to put money in that for the DragonCon charity, you can do that. Yeah, make it rattle. <laughs> Let's applaud the generosity of our panelists this morning. Yay! All righty. So I am Dr. Jennifer Greco. I'm going to be moderating this panel, and I will let my panelists introduce themselves. That's you, Noisy. That would Hi, be Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Nicole Gallucci. Yeah, it's working. Um, I am a physics professor. My background is in astronomy, and I also do education research stuff. Um, and I like telescopes. Hello. Hello. Um, <laughs> I lost his voice already. I lost my voice yesterday. How are you doing? Uh, <laughs> hello. My name is Ryan Consul. I, uh, teach engineering at a university in the great white North and write books and stuff. Uh, and relevant to this panel, complain about units on TikTok. Hello. Is this working? Yeah, that's low. Okay. Hi, my name is Celia Yost. I am an artist working in the home decor field. We don't really measure things. It's just vibes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Isaac Sheff. Uh, my PhD is in computer science, and I work in corporate research. And uh, I'm mostly here to complain about units of measurement that are extremely cumbersome. I forgot to say, I have a PhD in astronomy, and I now teach physics, uh, and I ranted at my students last week about why internet memes are bad if they say things like asteroid the size of 2,000 ferrets about to whiz by the planet Earth, or my personal favorite, large boulder the size of a small boulder blocking highway in Maine. <laughs> ah, wait, I want, okay, go back. What is the problem with the ferrets? I mean, how big is a ferret? You've Which never ferret? Seen a ferret? Ferret? What species of ferret? Right, this is the th so like Okay, okay, fair. Is this the baby mass? ferret, like adult ferret? ferret what species of ferret? Within an order of magnitude is fine. So the asteroid You're not is wrong. <laughs> okay, but that still doesn't change whether the width of the asteroid is the same as the length of 2000 ferrets or whether it's the mass of 2000 ferrets. Those or are the different orders of, of magnitude. Ferrets. And also is it a wet that? ferret or a dry ferret for volume? <laughs> order of magnitude, people. <laughs> Like, if you're gonna, if you, like, so we've got, like, basically a spherical object hurtling <laughs> through space. Let's pick a long, thin thing to measure it by. What if it's actually ferret shapes, though? Well, that's a, that's totally different, because that's the rubber ducky, uh, what was the rubber ducky asteroid that they landed on? The one with the long Russian name I can't pronounce. Exactly. <laughs> 
Google it. You'll, that's that's exactly what. C G. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I never learned to read. Yeah, rubber ducky shape. So measuring that in rubber duckies okay. would be coherent, at least. <laughs> I would like to thank the panelists for the image of a giant asteroid shaped like a ferret that is now going through my head right now. <laughs> okay, uh, before I get this panel even more off topic, what are, are we off topic? Unit? I don't know. That, that was, was a unit. unit. That 100% uh, matched do up each of you team. have a favorite unit, real, ridiculous, or otherwise, that you either enjoy or don't enjoy, as the case may be? All right. Well, my favorite unit, uh, after going to a conference a couple of years ago where I encountered some people working on it, is uh, Superman's per square meter. Uh, this is not Superman, but rather it has to do with the movie Superman from the 1970s with uh, Christopher Reeves. A uh, team at Microsoft was working on analog storage, so embedding teeny tiny images in glass. And there isn't really a great measurement for analog storage. You can't measure it in bits or whatever, so they decided to embed every single frame from the original Superman movie in their teeny tiny glass embedding system. And they managed to embed the entire movie in about seven and a half centimeters square. So that's about 178 Supermans per square meter as their unit of storage. <laughs> Sorry. I we made the mistake of asking the person this. with the best answer first. <laughs> well, Y'all look to the right. I don't know what to tell you. We did. We're like, not it. Fools. We are fools. Celia. Go, Celia. See, my answer is going to be real boring now because either it is like, so you know, like font, right? You, the thing you write the words with. <laughs> <laughs> it is so very. <laughs> you can be okay over there. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh, like, no. technically. <laughs> Technically, that is referring to the actual size of the letters back from when we used lead and like manually uh, set the font into like in the blocks to do the manual printing presses. Not as interesting as Superman. But I also have a complaint about the units of measurement that we use all the time, namely inches and centimeters. I went to art school. I am tired of having to convert between them. Can we please just pick one and stop making me do math? <laughs> yes. I vote yes. I vote centimeters. Would you like? I'm okay with that. Would you like a fine. terrible and annoying fact, America? Yeah. Always. Inches are metric. No. It, what? what? Stop it! <laughs> no. One. The definition for an inch is 2.54 centimeters. That is how you define an inch. That is the international standard definition of an inch. Boo. It is based, Boo. It metric. Boo. It is based entirely on a metric unit. It is a derived metric unit. <laughs> Bring derived back some fine. older definition. Derived is fine. Wait, no, that I'm does okay not make it a metric unit. Thank you. No. <laughs> Bring back some older definition. A twelfth of the king's foot? Yeah, yes! Like, yes! Foot, <laughs> like it's someone's actual foot that was based on? I want to yeah, update that, was, that yes. foot every time there's yes. a new king of somewhere where they have those. Feet? What? what? Feet? No, kings. 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 When the kings change. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, yes. Every, Wait, does most, place, most places have feet, to no, my knowledge. Nowhere actually uses the unit of measurement foot and has a king, though. No, that's because there's two places that use the measurement foot. There's officially. three. There's Myanmar, Liberia, and us. Oh, I'm yes. Sorry, I f forgot about that. Don't you Myanmar. watch Archer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we can find some royalty for so somewhere. Um. I'm over here wondering how you define the foot if the king has feet that are two different sizes. Like, is it the average? It's gotta be the right foot. Is it the right foot? Is it the left foot? Left foot's probably the devil foot. Yeah, the right foot because the king's always right. Ooh, right Ooh. foot, because the king's always right. I like that one. It's whichever foot the king says it is. Yeah. yeah. Probably true. Where were we? <laughs> uh, oh, we were at me with my favorite unit. Oh, no. Uh, I had one, and then I forgot. Oh, the barley corn. <laughs> Speaking of feet. <laughs> what? Yes. The barley corn. Everyone, we, we all, you guys all know the barley corn. Nope. Every single one of you is intimately familiar with the barley corn. What size shoe do you wear? That's measured in barley corn. So. What? What? <laughs> what? Shoe sizes, the American shoe size system, is based on the barley corn. 
the di- the difference between a shoe size, a full shoe size, is one barley corn, which is roughly one third of an inch. So that's six barley corns. No, there's okay. all. Because that's that, not no. It's an imp- It's an imperial system of measurement, which means it makes even less sense. <laughs> So where there is, is a base size for a shoe, oh. which then you add barley corns to. So in, in principle, there are negative shoe sizes. Yeah. Uh, yes. But like that's why we needed well, to invent children's kids. shoe size because you know a size one yeah. is I think uh, eight in, or nine inches for men, eight inches for women's, and then you add barley corns to it. So I subtract two from my shoe size if I want to get men's or I, kids. I think so. I'd have to. Because kids' yeah. shoes are cheaper. If you have tiny feet, do it. So also like, more fun. Grown-up shoes don't light up. Barley corn stored somewhere that like people are like pull up to make sure it's the actual. What is a barley material? corn? Yeah, like there's a sick. Yeah, what is the definition of a barley corn? Have you ever encountered barley? The things that you make. I grew up in New York City. No. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever encountered beer? I didn't beer? see a cow All right. All until right. a second year of college. So, understand? Okay, city kid who looks at space. So. <laughs> So there's there's things called plants. They're like animals, but they don't move as fast. <laughs> <clears throat> and then some of these plants, when two plants like each other very much, <laughs> um, some bees do, birds and bees do some stuff, and then there's seed pods. Okay. And a barley corn is one of the seed pods of a barley that you then crush up and make delicious beer. Um, okay, beer I get. Okay. <laughs> So before beer, <laughs> barley corn. Okay. Big ones are about a third of an inch. All right. Beer shoes. That that was a longer walk than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Noisy, what's your favorite unit? You're welcome, Ryan. Uh, my favorite unit is a bit obscure because it's a radio astronomy unit, and it's Jansky's. So Jansky... Uh, is named after the person who first discovered that radio waves were coming from space in the first place, Carl Jansky, who was an engineer in New Jersey in the 1930s and was trying to figure out how to um, remove sources of static from um, transatlantic radio communications. Um, and he discovered that you know some of the sources were lightning and some of the other sources were also lightning and one of them was space. The galaxy was giving off radio waves. And so they named the unit in his honor. This is spectral flux density, which is 10 to the negative 26 watts per square meter per hertz. And it drives people crazy, partly because what? Per hertz? Isn't that the same as seconds? Yes, that's part of it. But we're radio astronomers, so we talk in frequency. And because um, most of the, you know, that when you name, you know, most of the names of things are uh, factors of three, 10 to the negative three, 10 to the negative six, 10 to the negative nine, 10 to the negative 26, the 26 is not a factor of three, or multiple of three. Uh, and so it drives people nuts that it is like 10 off from that. But, but I think it is a much better unit than magnitudes, if you are familiar with magnitudes whoa, in whoa, astronomy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Because magnitudes are backwards, and my students can't handle logarithms, let's be honest. (laughs) Don't tell them about gauge. Jansky's at least is like, big number bright. In case you don't know what a magnitude is, as apparently the sole astronomer on this panel who's here to defend the honor of the magnitude, um, a magnitude is how we measure the brightness of stars. It's backwards. uh, Yeah, it's backwards. So magnitude zero is really bright, and magnitude like 27 is really faint, and it's a logarithmic scale. Because it's based on your eyeball. Right. Which is a terrible instrument. You're not wrong. My eyes are terrible. Um, The problem is that when they defined magnitude zero, they then discovered stuff that's brighter than magnitude zero, so there's also negative magnitudes. So if it's really, really bright, the magnitude is negative. And And if it's really, really faint, the magnitude is a large number. Why? And the star you they know, used, that is a question. The star they used as the basis for the system turns out has this crazy spectral shape that makes no sense. There's also that. This sounds like the Fahrenheit of space. Yes, it kind of but is. There are no star armpits. What? Okay, so the Fahrenheit system, one of the ways in which they set uh, the standards was 90 degrees was, you know, the standard temperature of an armpit. So the Fahrenheit scale is based on armpits. 
I don't know if I actually Seems reasonable to, to me. know that. <laughs> how, was this... How did they decide, like, find this out? Like, how many armpits were measured? Uh, I, ass- I assume average? two. Let, let me... Let, <clears throat> um, let me give you some incredible historical insight into how units uh, come to be. <laughs> One dead white guy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. N- named Fahrenheit, I would think. Yes. Yep. He took lots of measurements of armpits. Here's and salt water. Both. But armpits. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I understand how hot 90 degrees is. I do not under, in, in Fahrenheit. I do not understand how hot 20 degrees is in Celsius. Are you comfortable? No idea. No, like right now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's really about this. <laughs> a little chilly. Yeah. No, this seems no, a little too cold for 20. that. Yeah. Oh, maybe in the audience it's a little warmer. Yeah. All right, yeah. No. Fair. Yeah, it's no. true. It's true. Tw- 20 is like 20 ish is what you said your room to. Yeah. Yes. No, I. Thank you, I- Canadian. Hi, I'm Canadian. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Um. No, it's, uh, I love arguing with Americans about how much sense Fahrenheit makes because you're all convinced that it makes much more sense. It does. It does not. Does have, not. It does not. The thing that That's that the, only the thing, thing I like. is, you, you get used to whatever units you're raised with, and I teach engineering to a whole bunch of international students mm. who have grown up in countries who are not next to America who don't have to put up with dealing with all the imperial measurements and have converted entirely over to metric and SI. Which means when they come in and I start going, all right, y'all have to understand Fahrenheit and in inches because we're next to America and they get grumpy if we don't understand the words they say. <laughs> um, and in the don't poke the bear curriculum, all these like European and Asian students are like, this is the du- Fahrenheit is the dumbest thing in the world. Celsius makes so much sense. Night can't make head nor tails of it. Same with inches, feet, pounds, miles. Slugs. Slugs. Do you have to use slugs? They come up on occasion. <gasps> Do you have to use stone? No, that's a uniquely Britishism. And the British are fortunately far enough away from us that they don't get grouchy at us when we ignore it. <laughs> I don't know. You have the same queen. That's a complicated question. <laughs> And that's not what this panel's about. <laughs> well, Jen and I have been living in Europe for the last few years, and I don't know about you, Jen, but all of the people I work with just bitched at me about Imperial units for like three years straight. Yeah, despite never having lived in America, all of my European colleagues were like, aren't the units in the U.S. the literal worst? And I'm like, but you've never used them. And they're like, yeah, but like, if I ever went to the U.S., they'd be the worst. And I'm like, but, but how do you know? You, you don't, you, you've never used them. And then they would just like go on and on and on. And the whole time I was there, like anytime anything came up, they were like, but like, what is an inch? And I was like, okay. Of all the things Here we go that they're being criticized for, <clears throat> that's what they're focusing on? Oh no, they focused on other okay. things as well, but okay. that's not the subject okay. of this panel, is it? <laughs> I mean, you haven't had like true fun until you've told someone in total seriousness, okay, I need you to cut a piece of this thing that is 10 inches long by three millimeters. And they sort of look at you and go, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, we're using two different units for one. You know, you're right, this does not make sense. I'm a, I apologize. We're explaining to a room full of students why we have really silly sizes for things. Why, why our cans in Canada are 6.78 <laughs> centimeters. I'm like, well, why? It's three inches. <laughs> it's very expensive to change a canning factory, so we just changed the number. Yeah. 355 milliliters is 12 fluid ounces. Now, for the record, a fluid ounce of water does not weigh an ounce. This just seems incredibly stupid to me. Yeah, what is the What's fluid the ounce based off of? God Do you knows. Know? Oh, God. That's what Google exists for. <laughs> So while we continue to debate about units and their potential use or misuse and other favorite units, are there any examples you encounter where either people have chosen a really unfortunate unit of measure for something that you wish would be changed, or there's a unit that's often misused that you would like the opportunity to rant about, anything like that? 
I'll give this to the I'll give this to the panelists first, and then uh, then we'll see what happens. Some time to remember the thing that you were going to say. Oh no! Somebody already said it. Parsecs. I was Mm. about to. I was going to say we can rant all day about parsecs and how that is a unit of distance, not a unit of time, which throws my students off again. Although it has the sec sec in it. Um, It does seem like a division of a second. It does seem like it should be. Yes. A partial second. What doesn't help either is light years. So in my intros to classes, we're using light years, and my upper level classes, we're using parsecs. And either way, there is immediate confusion because neither of those are um, units of time, right? They, uh, the light year is the length of space that light travels in a year. Um, and the parsec is much more complicated because it has to do with par- geometry stuff. Uh, but it's about 3.26 light years. Um, you can scale that back to like normal sized things um, because a if you, the <laughs> this is great um, a light nanosecond <laughs> is about a foot. <laughs> so speaking of yes, going back to the imperial system, uh, when you take the speed of light, it turns out that in a nanosecond it goes about a foot. It actually shows up in computer science. If you want your computer to do a billion things a second, which they do. Uh, signal's not going to go more than a light nanosecond in that time, so we really do need the chips to be very small. <laughs> this is something Grace Hopper used to rant about. She would bring light nanoseconds as wires into lectures, but I couldn't find any wires at Staples, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah the, dong, the, the dongle, our dongle Please here do not is disassemble the yeah. Sidetrack AV equipment for purposes oh, of your panel. panel. I do not want to get fired on the first day of con. Thank you. I I have a very silly unit uh, that's actually going to be probably a generational divide here. Let's go. Watts. Watts is a very useful unit for measuring energy. But that's not what most people know what watts is. Who here knows how bright 60 watts is? How many people here are looking at me like I have two heads? Once upon a time, children, (laughs) we had what was called incandescent light bulbs, (laughs) which were heaters that had a minor side effect of glowing. Yes. And really we useful met, if you and can when, see in the infrared which and you when can't you plug them into a standard socket um they would absorb a standard amount of energy per second which is a watt and the boxes were labeled not with how bright they were but how much energy they soaked up so a 100 watt light bulb was very hot and very bright and a 40 watt light bulb was very dim uh, or moderately dim and generations of people understand brightness in watts. Mm-hmm. Turns out the current generation does not. So when they get an old circuits textbook oh, wow. and oh. it asks questions about light bulb brightness and watts, they are very lost. Oh. <laughs> However, they understand lumens, the actual. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. I have students now that'll be like, well, what's that in lumens? Are those like candelas? I have no idea. It's like (laughs) 60 watts. (laughs) (laughs) There are a bunch of other names for just numbers of watts as units of energy. We've got BTUs and my personal favorite, kilowatt hours per year, (laughs) which... (laughs) Explain that in smaller words. Yeah, so uh, a kilowatt hour is the amount of energy, it's a number of joules it takes to pump a kilowatt for an hour, a kilowatt being a thousand watts, and a kilowatt hour per year is what you measure, say, a power plant in if it pumps out a kilowatt hour once a year, or even spread out over the course of the year, but if you do the math and you divide an hour by a year and add a thousand in there or something, it's just a number of watts. And they keep measuring solar panels and power plants and stuff in this, which is quite annoying. Oh, I love that you skipped over BTUs. BTUs I is probably what your air conditioner mm-hmm. and, and heater is rated in. What does BTU stand for? British Thermal Unit. What? What? 
That is what BTU stands for. It's a meaningless, arbitrary unit, and it's just British thermal units. And it's the international standard for air conditioners. So did Nothing some else is measured British in it. person just pick this back Yeah, the they just made it up. And then we decided it was uh, like every other unit. Is, is this like just feet? Like, did some king just decide? Yeah, yeah somebody I just went, ah, oh, that feels about good. <laughs> <laughs> So how do I just, like, make up a unit and have it be the standard forever? Uh, how rich are you? Mm, not very. How smart are you? Mm, She's different, very different. smart. Not looking good. Okay, <laughs> what if I'm willing to break into NIST? Yeah. Ba- basically be, like, bourgeois in the eight, 17th or 18th century. Mm. So invent time travel. Got it. Oh, then you could absolutely have a time travel unit. I was going to say, that'd fact, be a great way to get a unit. <laughs> Goal achieved. Thank you. Sorry, we're all looking at you now. (laughs) You're all looking at me now. Drive this bus. (laughs) I think this bus has gone off the highway somewhere. Um, That's fine. Uh, This was the point of the panel. Um, I mean, I think we'll open this up to Q&A in a bit, but does anyone have any other, like, units that are... I'll I'll ask the panel one more question, then we'll open up for Q&A, because I can tell you guys have a lot of questions. But, like... Do you have any other units that are, like, so weird you have to share them? Or any, like, fake units you encountered on the internet that you wish were real? Anything like that before I open this panel up for Q&A? I want to talk about buttloads. <laughs> I'm sure you do. So I literally opened my email last night at the bar, and I'm like, why am I getting emails about butts? <laughs> it's so a very useful unit. A- apparently there are multiple sizes of cask, and barrel is only one of them. Uh, Hogshead, for example, is 63 gallons, and it's a, it's a specific standard size of cask, and a, a butt is a double hogshead, so it's a cask that holds 126 gallons. So a butt load would be how much wine you can put in a butt. It is 126 gallons. <laughs> so if someone tol- tells you they drank a butt load of anything <laughs> at, uh, at Dragon Con, uh, then they're probably exaggerating uh, or dead. Or it's water. Drink water, people. You're in Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta. a buttload of water would very much kill you. It's like, set, like that's. I think you drown. <laughs> uh, oh, I had one, then I got distracted. I was going to say, does anyone want to try and follow that? I uh, so there are units that, and and th- you, this may resonate with you, that I have internalized because I've been doing astronomy for so long, and oh, you know, no. talking about things in. It's not that weird. Talking about things in solar masses. Like, well, yeah, it's just 20 times the mass of the sun, which to me just makes sense in my head. And I taught <coughs> astrophysics. Um, so we're, we're a mostly physics program, but my students wanted to learn astrophysics. I'm like, yes, my favorite thing ever. And so I taught astrophysics for the first time to all my physics majors. And they're like, what? Well, how big is the sun? I'm like, oh, well, it's, it, it, it's the sun. I mean, it's the sun. You know what the sun looks like, right? And they're like, it's, it's, what's it's, wrong with you? It's sun-sized. It's sun-sized. Um, but we also do things like uh, giga years. It's a perfectly valid unit of measurement uh, yeah. when you're talking about astronomy. Um, most of our astronomy textbooks uh, use grams and centimeters instead of kilograms and meters. Wait, you've been measuring the mass what? of the sun in grams? Yes. And the distance to stars in centimeters? Yes. I mean, to Literally. be fair, when you've got a factor of like, what are the exponents on these things? Like 10 to the 30. Yeah. When it's 10 to the 30, does it really matter if it's 10 to the 32 because it's in centimeters That's at that point? That's what I thought. Like, like, one of my <laughs> students was like, what did kilograms ever do to you? <laughs> Why are we doing this? Actually, and, and something I did not know until I was doing a bit of research, the International Astronomical Unit has specifically told the international astronomy community, please use meters and kilograms because our students are confused. And <laughs> oh, please <laughs> use SIS. We still use, um, but we came up with some other fun units in that class, um, like elephants per teaspoon, which uh, <laughs> was a, a density measurement, uh, talking about uh, neutron stars. And there was, a, there was a, a problem, there was a problem I gave them that I did not realize would go so far off the rails, but I should have known my students because they're amazing and hilarious. Um, it was trying to calculate, okay, so neutrinos from the sun, those like really light mass particles, um, can very rarely interact with matter. If you have a whole big old tank of water, you can do that. And so the problem asked the students to just to figure out how many neutrinos could have been detected 
by counting up the mass of water in everyone's eyeballs <laughs> on the planet. And so, and I, yeah, so neutrinos per eyeball um, became a unit that we started to use uh, fairly regularly in that class after that. Again, I'm like, this is a totally normal problem for you to work out. And they were like, you're crazy, Dr. G. Why are you doing this to us? I am Dearest. very upset by the eyeball thing. <laughs> that so, should... But we found, but like someone's eyeball saw a neutrino during this particular supernova event. Someone on Earth had a flash of light in their eyeball. That, I guess that's, yeah, so Which is pretty a, approximately crazy. one person yeah. in one eye. Yes. Do we believe that person? <laughs> yeah, like, how do, how do we know? Were they sleeping? Right. I, dear astronomers, I have a very silly question for you, and this, this goes back to how, like, a problem with metrology in general. Um, uh -huh. Like, our standard kilogram mm. is just a hunk of metal. And yep. they realized oh, well. relatively recently in the span of things that there is a tiny amount of like, like effectively decay that a t like every now and then an atom will shoot off and that the mass of that kilogram will change over time by like an atom. The sun is spewing off mass mm -hmm. at a much higher rate than an atom. Why is it your unit standard when it's like, it's like, how much water is in this bucket? Let me punch a hole in it and we'll measure. <laughs> Order of magnitude, Ryan. Yep. Order of magnitude. So, uh, so we'll all be dead before so the change massive. matters? Yeah. The okay. sun is so massive that the like kilotons of matter coming off of it are like, meh. It's like an atom, more or less. Right. I was once, as an undergrad, doing a homework assignment, and my best friend and I were doing it together. We were off from each other by a factor of a thousand, and we looked at each other and we went, yeah, that's fine. And the engineer sitting at the table across from us just started going. <laughs> <laughs> and going, no, like if you ask me for something that's the size of a meter and I give you something the size of a kilometer, you're gonna have a problem. And we're like, yeah, Not but in, space. in astronomy, it's fine. And I just watched her go, so my takeaway here is don't ever let an astronomer build your house. 100% true. 100% yes. 100% true. Building telescopes is hilarious, you guys. It really is. All right. Anything else, panelists? Um, well, uh, on that, astronomers, what what is the value of pi in space? One. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Makes the math easier. It really does. One or ten. It's either one or ten. The math is great when pi is one, <laughs> you guys. High energy, I think it was my high energy astrophysics class is where we did that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bef before before my panelists make each other cry, uh, I'm going to open this up for Q&A. Reminder. It's just now you get to see it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, reminder. I mean, we, we all missed each other, so this is fine. Uh, reminder to keep your masks on. Please don't eat in the track room, or if you do, put your mask on in between bites of food and sips of water. Uh, can I get uh, some people to run mics around uh, for Q&A? Got it over here. All right. Raise your hand, and our esteemed here. mic <coughs> runner will come to you. So you have to get this mic close. So you got to get it about an inch away from it. It's like an yeah. Inch. Please eat the mic, and because we all have masks on, you, like, really have to commit to eating the mic. Can I have some salt? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she wants that season. Panelists, what is your most despised unit? Oh. Oh. Like a unit we like, but others despise, or a unit we despise? A unit you despise. A unit we despise. Okay. Clearly stellar magnitudes <laughs> for me. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. I mean, I, I do have a personal distaste for stone, which is a, a measurement only used by British people to measure their own mass. Uh, and I have no idea what it is. So whenever I talk to British people and they measure something in stone, um, yeah, I've 14 already forgotten. Pounds. I, I, uh, 14 I pounds. 14 pounds. Wait, not... Oh, sorry, you just reminded me what my most despised unit was. I'm like, I have a lot I don't like. <laughs> pounds force. So what? what is that? So what about pounds force mass or pounds force? No, pounds force as opposed to pounds weight. 
<laughs> so force. What? Any sensible person measures in newtons, and mass you measure in grams. But of course, we don't use pounds or, or kilograms or newtons down here. We use pounds for everything. Much like there's fluid ounces and then there is weight ounces, there is pounds, weight, and pounds, force, which are different units. Right, that's right. And I have to teach this to engineering students. I did have to. Who I'm also charged with protecting and helping live a better life. And it's hard to do both of those at the same time. That one time I taught statics, remember, I went to you because I was like, what is this? Why am I teaching an engineering course? I, I had the same issue. I'm like, foot pounds! Why are we doing this? Oh, no, foot pounds is a totally different nonsense unit. Yes. That's torque. Yes. Which we're also victims of up north because of y'all's cars. <laughs> All right, I'm going to break the rant up and open it up for the next question. Okay, so this continues on with the uh, temperature discussion from earlier. Um, the worst unit that I'm, I'm curious for your reaction to, uh, Artemis 1 scrubbed on Monday uh, because one of the engines couldn't get down to temperature. And in the press conference, they were asked what temperature were they shooting for? And they gave a figure in Rankin. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you going to be okay down there, Isaac? Oh my God. For those that don't know, um, absolute temperature is typically measured in Kelvin. Zero yeah. Kelvin is the coldest it is possible to get. There's no atomic uh, movement. But Fahrenheit obsessies decided they needed their own and came up with ranking, which is just wrong Kelvin. Yes. <laughs> not, not incorrect, morally wrong Kelvin. Not <laughs> as incorrect as degrees Kelvin. That just makes my brain uh. explode. Yeah, that's not might, real. My least favorite unit might be degrees Kelvin because it's not real. Next that's question. Ped, that's just pedantry. That was somebody forgot the degrees at the beginning and said, no, no. Yep. I got it right. All it's of you are absolute. wrong. It's absolute. It's not by degrees. It's absolute. They measure the most Kelvins uh, and I assume rank. On the topic of most hated, I'm a microbiologist and we use some funky units. Um, <laughs> my two most hated are the McFarland, which is a measure of optical density. What? But what? it is also a measure of turbidity because bacteria are different sizes and you can't state X number of bacteria per milliliter. And it's only measured through a, spectro a spectrophotometer. And so I have no, and so most of the time we're like, yeah, it looks like one McFarland, that type of thing. But the other one that annoys me, and I think the, I think the astronomers will be okay with this, <laughs> is we use uh, most probable number because instead of like measuring how much is in food or because I test food, we test a series of dilutions in triplicate and however many of those grow. And the most probable number through a bunch of math can range from like 40 to 900 uh, colony forming units in a particular sample. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> but those are mine, as a, as a microbiologist, we use McFarland and most probable number instead of whatever else you would use for optical density. I think, as astronomers, we deal with optical depth as well. We should totally yeah. adopt the McFar <laughs> McFarland. What is it? Mayf what, what? McFarland, McFarland, and I totally agree. Yes. Going home and teaching that to my students, and then we'll like, we'll just set the trend with the next generation. So this is actually playing off what we were talking earlier about pounds force and uh, pounds weight. Um, what is the? Do you do you guys remember the unit of mass for imperial? It is the slug. The slug. The slug. Yes. So that mm. one always, uh, that, that's my both favorite and least favorite because it is the weirdest. It's like 32, 32, there's, there, yeah, it's just, weird. You just, div you just divide pounds by gravity and you get it roughly. <laughs> but is there an actual like D slug involved at some point? That's what we would need to know. Does a slug weigh a pound at sea level? Is it a very <laughs> large <laughs> slug or a very small slug? Like Have you met slug? a one-pound slug? Yeah, what banana species slugs is might slug? Be up there. Yeah, I guess. So, uh, two comments. First of all, on the pounds mass, it's really fun doing engineering and having to sit there and say, okay, we've got pounds mass, pounds mass and pounds force, and they're like, okay, we've got this equation, and we have to add in G, because G is gravity, but we can't have gravity because we're one pounds mass force, so add in the constant G to cancel out gravity because it gets weird. But my actual <laughs> comment was, um, another fun unit is the 
ton of cooling. I don't know if you've ever run into this one. The, the what? If you're dealing with large HVAC units, cooling is measured in tons. Not BTUs. It is. Not BTUs. Uh, a ton is what is the amount of energy required to melt one ton of ice. <laughs> It goes back to the old, when they had, uh, when they were shipping things across railroads, oh they would add a ton of ice up at the top to cool, keep the whole thing cool. And so that is where the unit comes from, melting one ton of ice. T-O-N-N-E? Yeah, I'm also going to... <laughs> yeah. What? Is that a metric Thank you ton for of reminding ice? me of another thing. Let's name two different units, ton, and just... <laughs> can you hear the extra N-E at the end? Ton. <laughs> Not if you are French. Also, may I recommend setting G to 1? That's what the astronomers did with pi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I'm about to open a relativity unit, and so we're going to measure time in meters and, and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. <laughs> it's going to be great. Hi. Um, so I actually am a metrologist for the state of Tennessee. Woo! Um, <laughs> I'm sorry for this panel. <laughs> Sorry? I'm sorry for this panel. And that oh, no, no, it's been it. so much fun. Um, I told my boss I had to come to this because... I just felt obligated to. But um, so I've been to NIST and I've seen like the million pounds of weight for like calibrating rockets for force and things. Did you know though that they have a standard for peanut butter? Tell me more. Yes, it's, they have little packets and it's creamy peanut butter. I don't know what the units are for different things for it, but they have a standard for peanut butter. They also have a standard for water. It comes in little packets also. Is this to measure like the volume of the peanut butter or the mass, like the the thickness? I'm yeah. guessing the viscosity, huh. but um, they just they passed around packets of peanut butter and they're <laughs> like, "This is the standard for peanut butter." <laughs> I'm I'm not okay with the standard being smooth, but that's just me. <laughs> I agree. Well, like you, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to like. To standardize peanut butter, you'd start with smooth. Otherwise, you'd, it would be degrees peanut butter, and you'd have to have like, sort of like your arbitrary crunchiness, and then things would be degrees off crunchy. Well, I'm it, okay with that. It, you don't Let's want an absolute. You don't want to use Look, an absolute scale. Absolute pie scales is are one, bad. but I want to know about the details of peanut butter. Well, isn't isn't chunky peanut butter or crunchy peanut butter? Uh, couldn't that be characterized unit-wise as a viscous liquid plus a granular unit? Yeah. So it's like two separate orthogonal measures, and we do have to have a viscous liquid measure in there. <laughs> Other We're questions. really fun friends to have. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to talk about color temperature, which is if you buy what? light color bulbs at like Home Depot, mm -hmm. you, they range from about 2,700 to 6,500 from like a, a very yellow light to a very white light. Uh -huh. And that is also measured in Kelvins. Yes which is if you take a piece of iron and heat it up to that temperature of Kelvin, that is the color it will glow. Yes! It's, uh, As astronomers, we love that! It's, <laughs> it's black body radiation, and that actually is the temperature, more or less, of the filament in an incandescent bulb for those right. of you old enough to use watts. This is where I get to, you know, I think I literally just went over this in my first one of my first classes, is how hot stars are blue and cool stars are red. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, so in art, we just kind of talk about the color, how it feels. So <laughs> it's like you have your warm colors are your reds and your oranges and your yellows and your cool colors are your blues and your greens yep. and your purples. And totally backwards. We're totally backwards. <laughs> it's all about the vibes. <laughs> you know, it's this shocking realization that art isn't technically rigorous. <laughs> um, I've got another question. Do you guys have any strange units of time that you enjoy using? For example, uh, me and some of my friends like using the term Shrek to determine 90 minutes, because that's the length of the movie Shrek. Oh my god. So if I'll, if I'll be there in three hours, I'll be there in two Shreks. Oh my god, I love that. that that's brilliant. The silly, the very silly unit for time, the second it is, it is the global standard. Yeah. What is a second? It is 1 60th of 1 60th of 1 24th. Oh, no. 1 60th yeah. of 1 24th of a day. No, 1 60th of 1 60th of 1 24th of a day. Of a solar day. Of a solar day. <laughs> <laughs> because and we're just like, yeah, that's good. If you're an astronomer and you remember, oh, yeah, the Earth's moving around the sun while it's spinning, we have a sidereal day which is 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four point la 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 seconds. <laughs> so we actually have a second clock in our observatories that tell us what time it is. We do. It's sidereal time. Speaking of two units with the same day. name. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But the fun thing is we have had to, as our clocks have gotten better and we've needed more and more precise measurements of time, put a lot of effort into <coughs> defining the second in different ways without changing its size. Yep. Like, there's, so there's it's, some, it's now, it's now uh, the 9 time. million 264,028 uh, repetitions of the frequency of cesium atom at a certain temperature Kelvin. Yep. Yep. Totally makes sense. Yeah. Just to keep it the same size. At least size. it's well defined. <laughs> Go into science, everyone. It'll be great. Next, I see we've got a question in the back. Yes, thanks. I enjoy the panel very much. Um, going back to barley corn, <laughs> because it was measuring the difference in shoe size for a full size. You said a third of an inch, and that is accurate for women's shoes. I worked in a shoe factory from 1984 to 1988, buying everything from outsoles to shoelaces, everything in between. For men's shoes, the sizing gradient for a full size is a half inch. I worked with the pattern room and they had to p expand all the parts so that they would all fit in larger sizes. The, at one time in Cincinnati, there were 17 shoe factories. We were the last ones closed in 88. And there were 550 jobs in that one shoe factory. Now back then we had men's and women's, and maybe there are seven somewhat different sizing now. The other weird thing, the measurements in the leather of the shoe, the thickness was measured in ounces. What? What? Wow. Measure, <coughs> yes, yes, tell us more. An tell ounce, us more. A third an ounce, ounce is one sixty-fourth of an inch. <laughs> it is now. Why? <laughs> The outsoles. You're looking at me like this is normal, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> it's common knowledge. <laughs> what? Checks out. Then, then also, when most shoes had leather outsoles, the outsoles were measured in irons, <laughs> one forty-eighth of an inch. <laughs> so yeah, maybe we're, we're getting better, but uh, <laughs> those are different. Looking at I don't know why you're surprised. I would so like to. Right have you been listening today? I'm so confused right now. <laughs> I'm. Wait. Does this mean that? So, if the barley corn thing is the standard for shoot, does that mean the standard is women's? Does that there, never yes. happen? Are there two I, different barley corns? Oh. Oh gosh. Um, and the men's is the weird one. Let's go with U.S. This is probably a U.S. British gallons problem. Okay. You know that there's oh, British no. gallons and U.S. Ga gallons, and that they're different sizes. What? Yep. This is the why when British people drink I, pints, they're bigger. The, the reason that I was told that they are different is fraud. Is what? that what? the U.S. were selling gallons of things to the British, and the British were buying gallons of things, and then they were like, you're stiffing us, this isn't the right size. And some very rich and clever U.S. merchant went, they're U.S. gallons. <laughs> And thus, they have been different ever since. What? <laughs> that is extremely worrying. I that see we hundred percent on brand U.S. Yeah. Well, yeah, well done. Yeah. Uh, well done. Head across the ocean, and like you know, things happen. We're just gonna commit to that real hard and never change. Uh, all right. All right. On well, brand. on that extremely inspiring note, I see we have a question in the back. So, can you all explain a micromort? A micro what? It's I, I've been told it's a unit. Of a death. Yeah, it's like a unit to measure the probability of death. How are we feeling oh. about that? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have heard of this. Oh. <laughs> so uh, this is way back in the back of my brain. It's a one <clears throat> million, one in a million probability of death. So, I think these are probably used for dangerous jobs, coal mining getting irradiated, whatever other jobs COVID. people have. I would go with SI because they've got the micro prefix. <laughs> For those of you who didn't hear the question, the question was, is the micro mort in SI or Imperial? <laughs> I guess at the opposite end of the spectrum, there is the mega death. <laughs> So 
so a, a million deaths is used as a measure of destructiveness for, well, usually nuclear weapons. But um, I guess it's a lot of micromorts. <laughs> Please bring this conversation into a more uh, less depressing vein. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, so um, <laughs> I'm in interior architecture, and a common measurement for us is foot candle. Um, a foot, foot candle no? is one lumen per square foot. Um, yes, you can sometimes still find them on light bulbs, um, but not a lot of people know what a foot candle is. So. Yeah, it's a, I, I had to explain it. I had to look it up to some engineering students because it came up. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds like something you trip over. <laughs> <laughs> or like a very bad kind of shoe for like going to the bathroom at night. <laughs> you're like, oh so you can God. see where you're going. So are, are there like minimum numbers of foot candles for uh, like sufficiently well illuminated space? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That would make sense. I'm not going to lie. Foot candle sounds like what we should use to measure the brightness of light up shoes. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. can I submit this as a unit? <laughs> Kevin. Oh, hey, thank you. Um, so my, my thing is uh, hardness units are just really stupid. <laughs> like, durometer? What? What? There's like six or five or six different ones, and none of them are the same, and none of them are close to the same. And yeah. you could have 60 in one, and that's like yeah. 300 in the other. And yep, yep. So hardness in general is like, so in engineering, <laughs> Hardness is how the ability of something to scratch another thing, not how good it is at being smashed and not falling apart. That's toughness. Diamonds are hard, not tough. Um, but how you measure it is you take something that's hard and then you try to squish it into the thing that you're trying to measure. And we have multiple overlapping scales. Rockwell is the most common one, and it's just arbitrary numbers. Some guy made up a shape and a hard thing and went, eh, let's see how this does. <laughs> it's a hemisphere you mash into most metals. It's not good for rocks. Yeah, no, it's Rockwell's. It's just a number. Yeah, it's just a Rockwell number. There's multiple Rockwells. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's, it's. Very silly. If you've ever taken a, uh, <clears throat> in our geology lab, we have, you know, here's the penny and here's mm -hmm. the iron nail and you scratch your minerals to figure out what type it is. I did not realize there were multiple scales of this nonsense. <laughs> we do have a calibrated, like, we have a calibrated, what's that? Orders of magnitude. Orders of magnitude. Yeah, Which sure. is why I'm still upset about magnitude being a unit. <laughs> Because you have magnitude. What is? What's the magnitude of magnitude? Blame Your the Greeks. Magnitudes. Blame the Greeks. Blame the ancient Greeks. But yeah, we have a calibrated yeah, set now. It has Greeks. like pointy things of different hardnesses, and so we can use that on our mineral samples. We have somebody patiently waiting for us to stop ranting. Yeah, we have a another <laughs> question in the back. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, first, having thickness be in ounces is still a thing with printed circuit boards. You measure the thickness Ooh. of copper in ounces, what? which is, I believe, an ounce weight of copper spread over a meter. It's how oh, thick God. it ends up being. But, so uh, did someone just like really like the <laughs> word ounce and decide we're just going to use this word in as many different contexts as possible? Wizard of Oz fans. <laughs> but I do also have a question, which is uh, I've, I've heard um, a barn is a unit used in particle physics, but I, yep. I don't understand what it is or, or how it came to be. Do any of oh. you actually know? Barn is a unit of area from particle yeah. physics. I think the joke is about hitting a broad side of a barn, yeah. but of course they're deceptively small. A barn yeah. is about the area of a cross section of a uranium atom. So if you're trying to hit, <laughs> if you're trying to hit a uranium atom with a neutron or something to cause a nuclear reaction to happen, uh, you have to hit the broad side of a barn. Baby barn. <laughs> A barn made of uranium atoms is a very bad barn. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is a very dangerous barn. Teeny, also very heavy. Teeny tiny horses now. <laughs> <laughs> I am very concerned for the cows in this barn. Please don't build your barn out of uranium atoms and measure it in barns. It would be very bad for your livestock. Okay, how many banana equivalent doses of radiation do you need to hit a barn at distance? <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know. Do you measure that in mega deaths? Let's go to the next question. <laughs> Rescue us from ourselves. Okay, so going back to the ridiculousness of, of seconds, oh. uh, <laughs> one of the things that I was uh, taught was that 
uh, latitude and longitude came first, and that minutes and seconds are actually based on degrees, minutes, and seconds from maps, uh, which of course makes no sense. I don't believe that's true, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it's one of, there is another way to really annoy people is with uh, naming units the same thing, is that, well, the Earth rotates once in a day, and so we can divide our, our, our uh, longitudes by seconds and minutes. That makes a kind of sense, right? Uh, but the up and downs, we wouldn't want different units from side to side and up and down, so we'll do the same thing in up and downs. It's terrible. It makes no sense. But we all use it because it's what we use. I think we have time for one more, maybe. Okay, so. sorry, I had to look that up. The, the Sumerians in the third millennium BC were the sexagesimal base 60 users, and that, I think, got propagated to both time and angle. Yeah, but yeah, that's why we divide it. There's 360 degrees, and that's broken into uh, minutes and seconds, but it's not the same seconds as is on a clock. I think my favorite unit of measurement that I just found out about recently is a way to measure radiation, and it's the mushroom sandwich index. The what? The, the what mushroom now? sandwich index. So there were students apparently over at a university in Sweden where they were trying to measure the amount of radioactive fallout that was contained in the natural flora and fauna around them. And so they came up with this index or this measurement of how many mushroom sandwiches would you have to eat in a year to have a lethal dose of radiation. Would you die of I too much mushroom sandwich first? I think I, I would. can it confirm on I the just mushroom. lived in I just lived in Sweden for two years. I can confirm this is a real thing that people in Sweden talk about. I feel like that is an excellent note on which to end an excellent panel. Um, I have one more. Go ahead, give them a round of applause. They were great. So I have one more announcement. You will see up here I have this lovely stack of rainbow index cards. Um, I and some other unfortunate, I mean lucky people, are doing a panel on Monday called Calculations We're Sad We're Doing. <laughs> and what we would like you to do is submit questions you have, like, I don't know, how many elephant spoons are in a neutron star, <laughs> or how many ferrets are in an asteroid, or really whatever you've always wanted to know, any order of magnitude thing you've always wanted to know, how many uranium atoms are in your barn, I don't know. Um, on these cards and put them in the bucket. And then on Monday, you can come back at 1 p.m. and watch us try to do those calculations. <laughs> so please submit things for us to do. I'm a little scared. Please be kind, but also it will be great and very entertaining. So please submit calculations for that and come back on Monday. And uh, thank you very much for being a great audience. Thank you, science! Thank you. <laughs> science.